Hey everyone, welcome back. This video, we're gonna be talking about how to get user input. So far, we've talked about output using this console out, C out. We've also talked about how to use variables with C out. Pretty simple, nothing too crazy, and honestly, getting input really isn't anything too crazy either. So hopefully this video is pretty simple and you understand every piece of it. Now, before I share with you guys the magical secret on how to get user input, I want you guys to check out the sponsor, Embarcadero C++ Builder. This is a great tool for you guys if you want a really good integrated development environment. If you want a good debugger to help you build applications, a really good UI building system, and awesome deployment options to numerous platforms, check out C++ Builder. I'll leave a link for you guys in the description. I think this is gonna be the tool for you guys, especially if you ever want to deploy to mobile applications because you can do everything from a common C++ code base. So check them out, and now let's get back to slices of pizza. <laughs> Gosh, I love pizza. Oh. Anyways, we're hard coding this value in here. So the term hard coding is similar to a literal, basically we're manually typing in the value in our source code, which means if we wanna change this value later on, we'll have to change the source code and then the new version of the application will have to be given to our customers. Not something we wanna do. So sometimes we're going to want to get these values from different locations. You can get it from a text file, you can get it from a configuration file, which is basically a text file, but it could be an Excel file. You get it from a database, but one of my favorites is to get it from user input. So we actually ask the user what they want to put in. What we do is let's leave this variable declared, but not initialized. And then we use cin, which I bet you guys can't guess what that means. <laughs> it means console in. So this is how we get stuff from the input stream. Now this is part of the standard namespace, so we have the option of putting that up here or prefixing it with standard. So I'm gonna put it up here just to make our lives easier. And then in here, we say C in, and we use two greater than symbols. Now I was always confused on which symbols to use until I realized this trick. It's fairly obvious, I don't know why I didn't get this from the beginning, but the arrows point in the direction of data flow. So for console out as an example, this string is going out to the console, so it's pointing towards the console. In C in, we're getting data from the console, and it's getting stored in a variable, specifically slices. So this will work when we run this, after we compile. It's just going to do nothing. It's asking us for a value, we just don't know it. So if we put a value in there, it's gonna say you have six slices of pizza. Very, very simple. The only thing I recommend is to do an output so people know what's going on, like this and we run this, it's gonna ask us a question, and then it's going to output the value right there. So in this situation, we are getting this data from the console, but it's very easy to extend this to other things such as text files, and that's something we'll probably be getting into later on in this series. Another thing I wanted to mention is that C in is also an object, just as C out is an object. C out is an instance of O stream, and C in is an instance of I stream. So that's how you get user input. Very simple, hopefully it was helpful for you guys. Now check out the next video because at this point we have basically the foundation. I'm gonna be talking to you guys about best practices, comments, formatting, naming conventions, lots and lots of cool stuff that is very important for building larger scale C++ applications. So check it, it's gonna be awesome. See you there, man. Or girl, sorry. <laughs> Peace.